भले हेलो बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम आई एम प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर गुलाम सरवर पीरजादा बिलोंग्स टू फोरेंसिक मेडिसिन डिपार्टमेंट आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट द न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ द फोरेंसिक मेडिसिन आई होप दैट यू आर ऑन द ऑनलाइन एंड आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द न्यू चैप्टर ट्रामेटोलॉजी दिस इज द most important chapter of the forensic medicine including all the knowledge about the injuries basically i will start the terminology then i will go to discuss the injuries individually first of all i would like to start the the what is the traumatology what do you mean by traumatology and what is the history lies behind the traumatology okay said jin ka हेलो नाउ लेट अस सी हियर द फर्स्ट स्लाइड नेक्स्ट पॉइंट रूप ट्रामेटोलॉजी now the uh, what is the traumatology that is the basically the uh, traumatology is the science or the knowledge about the injuries the injuries affecting on human body generally we called about the traumatology what is the uh, history lies behind the traumatology now previously and uh, let us see the history just uh, in the few line i would like to say about the history background from the knowledge about the injuries is that if you remember when i talk about the uh, scope of forensic medicine and the history about the forensic medicine that the medicine, there was uh, no concept about the types of the injuries because one could not be interpreted and uh, differentiated the different injuries and with the, with the passage of time when the science was on the top then the veterinary they distinguish all the uh, hard blood substances sharp force trauma now the firearm then they start classifying the injuries separately then they distinguish the injuries uh, which are the uh, produced by hard blunt substances which are produced by sharp cutting instrument and which are produced by the fast force trauma that is the firearm injuries before starting the traumatology i would like to start the definitions uh, some terminology you must know about the terminology first of all one is the trauma what do you mean by trauma trauma is any severe harm which are caused either physically psychologically mentally by an external agent we call the trauma i i would like to repeat the definition of trauma any severe harm however caused either physically mentally or psychologically by an external agent we call is the term trauma and logus is the science of all these injuries we called is the traumatology second point is the injury injury is a defined as a, uh, any social harm however illegally caused to body mind reputation and prosperity we technically called is the injury mera meri awaaz nahi ja rahi hello now i talk about the injury any social harm however illegally cause to body mind reputation and prosperity that is called as injury before you starting i this chapter you should know all these uh, simple terminology then better you will be understanding regarding the uh, science of injuries then the third term we have got hurt hurt is the uh, who ever causing bodily pain disease infirmity without causing death we called is the hurt you simply because there are so many differentiation between the 
assault, then we go betray, then wound, injury, hurt. So you should have know about all the terminology individually, then you will get the, through the injuries. Then we have got the word wound. What is the, what do you mean by wound? Wound is the technical term. It is called as the break, dissolution, or the disruption in the anatomical continuity of the skin. Because the wound is defined as any break in the solution of the continuity of the anatomical continuity of the skin caused by either internally or externally caused by any agent we call as the wound. Now in forensic medicine, the word wound is less commonly used. Here we use of term injury, but so far so is the from the surgical point of the view, the word wound is common, which is used in the surgery point of view. Then we've got a word battery. Battery is a actual application of physical force on the body without his or her consent, we call it as the battery. Then we've got technical term, last term is the assault. Assault is defined as the any offer, or any threat or application of physical force in a hostile manner. The word hostile manner means not clarified because sometimes can hiddenly apply the force on body. So application of physical force in a hostile manner without her his or her consent we call it as the assault. So you better know about the word trauma, word definition of injury, you should know the hurt, we should know the wound, battery, assault, every in definition has got different positions. Always the assault will be without battery, but the battery cannot be without assault. So this is the technical terminology. Now just we are going forward. Next. Now you see here that uh, what are the major offenses affecting on the human body? Now I talk about the signs of injury. So in the form of injuries, let us see how many type of the offenses affecting on the human body. Basically, there are four offenses affecting on the human body. Number one is a physical. When any physical interpretation or application of physical force applied on the body, we call this the wounding because everybody can suffer from application of physical force either by blunt force trauma, either by sharp force trauma, either by fast force trauma whenever any physical application of force or technically on the body and leading to wound formation, we call it as the wounding. So one of the most important offense affecting on human body is in the form of injury, we call it as the wounding. Number second is the psychological, psychological offense affecting on human body is in the term of psychological torture. Now, psychological torture may be again classified many times, but first, first we know about what are the major offenses affecting on human body. So in the form of number one, either human body can suffer from wounding, human person can suffer from psychological offense in the form of a psychological threat, and number third is the sexual uh, offense. Now, this, this is a sexual offenses. Now, this is one of the major offense affecting on your body, sexual assault. And number fourth is the ending of life. This is the last because when you kill someone or you can destroy the product of consumption in the intrauterine stage, we call it miscarriage. So ending of the life can occur either extrauterine, either can we occur interference with the intrauterine. When you kill someone extrauterine, we call it the killing. When you, you, you can ending the life and when you can interfere some product of conception in the gestational period, we call this miscarriage. So basically you keep in your mind, there are four major offenses on the human body. Human body suffer from either from trauma that is wounding, either suffer from psychological torture, either may suffer from the sexual assault, either may suffer from the ending of life in the form of killing or in the either form of the miscarriage. Now, before starting, I would like to start, first of all, the classification of injuries. There are so many classifications, at least five to six classification of injuries, of the injuries can be noted. First of all, I would like to comment on the anatomical classification of injuries. 
Anatomical class of injuries may be classified into three groups. One is the closed wounds, second is the open wounds, and number one, third is the burns. Now, what I talk about the first number one closed wound, whenever the individual suffer from the trauma or wound, but anatomical continuity of skin is not just that. Externally, they are closed wounds because I will I am showing the slide. And open wound is that whenever an application of force applies resulting to wound formation and the wound is opened, when you see the open wound, there is a formation of injury, open wound, and burn is the application of any physical uh, assault by burning either by heat or by falling a cold, uh, that is hot water, leading to the burning. Let us see these slides, which is very clear fight. Now you see this in this slide, this is a, uh, uh, you see on the left eye, there is a big uh, uh, spectacle hematoma-like swelling. This is called as the bruise. This is the closed wound. Now you see externally the continuity of skin is normal. And, and you see next slide, their arm is shown where there is a blackish, bluish spot seen on the deltoid area, below deltoid area. Again, this is the bruise. This is the closed injury. So close injury either in the form of bruise because external continuity of skin is not a disrupt, only the accumulation of the blood in the under surface of skin, subcutaneous tissue, but externally skin is not breaking down, we call it the close injury. Number two is the example of close injury is the abrasion. You see the second slice. Next question. Now you see in, uh, in this, the arm, now there is a great uh, um, um, skin loss and uh, injury. This is called abrasion. This is a type of abrasion. This is called it's gra grazing. Graze, whenever person fall down on the ground, you see in case of the RT or road traffic accident, most probably when a person skin or any part rub against the rough surfaces, leave the uh, rough area. This is uh, called as the abrasion. But in next slide, you see, so when a pointed, pointed object like pin, thorn, or other pointed object, safety pin, driven across the skin, they leads epithelial tissue take coming on the surface. Again, these is our type. This is the scratching, and this is the this is a scratching for type of abrasion, and this is a. Graze is again type of abrasion. These are all both coming in the closed type of injuries. Now let us see the example of the open injuries. Now open injuries is you see in this one slide. This is the lacerated wound. You see the wound is produced. We call this the open wound because there is a disruption in anatomical continuity of skin is easily seen. Number second slide. This is the firearm injury and a bullet has been hit in the skull which caused the wound of entry. And again, this is the open wound of open injury. In third slide, you see the sharp instrument is driven across the skin, resulting the incised wound. This is the incised wound. And number one slide, you have noted lacerated wound. And if you see, and this is again the example of the uh, open wound. Again, on the fourth slide, multiple stable. Now the the multiple stable, female sustained multiple injuries by a knife. You see different shapes of the injuries seen on the epigastric area, seen on the chest area, below breast area. Again, these all are good examples produced by various weapons. This is a good example of the open wounds. Then you see the burns. This is example, burns may be, burn may be dry burn or maybe wet burn. Dry burn means when you bring across a flame. Flame is given like as you see in three years when the hand touch across or when flame is brought to the skin leading dry burn. So legs show dry burn. But in this next slide, you see the corrosive burn. Now this person has a drink away the corrosive. So there is a corrosion of the mouth as well as the skeloid formation seen on the skeloid formation seen on the chest area again this is a type of burn but when the wet water or the, the, the boiling water falls down over the part which called as the wet burn and which lead the scaled formation sometimes you see that when boiling water falls on the skin or the any part of the body 
they lead a, 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 a there is bullous formation or bullae or sometimes the scaldings which contain of the exuded material. So these are the good example of the burns. These are the anatomical classification of the injuries. We, I am switching over the number second classification of injuries. Number second is the medical legal classification. Now medical legal class, this is more important medical legal classification of injuries and including number one is the mechanical injuries. Mechanical injuries again subclassified as uh, closed injuries. Example will be the same, that is the close injury, including abrasion and bruise. Open injuries containing the incised wound, lacerated wound, stay wound, penetrating injuries, and other pointed object which lead the open injuries. Number third is the firearm wound. I show you the firearm wound. Again, it is a come in the category of mechanical injuries. And number fourth is the fracture. Because when you hit someone by hard and blunt substances or even by firearm injury can lead the fracture and even the, this comes comes in under the category of the mechanical injuries. The causative agent for mechanical injuries are many. You see the causative agents for these injuries. So number one is the hard and blunt substance. You see this picture, this contains all this, the material that is there are hard and blunt substances. All these are type of hard and blunt substances. In spite of this, hard and blunt substance may be stone, may be earth, maybe other material which are a hard and blunt substances all these substances when hit on the body can lead the formation of the lacerated wound not incised wound but they are produced hard blunt substance all these type of in wounds weapons stones brick earth when person fall they lead formation of either abrasion or they can produce the lacerated wound. number two you see the sharp cutting in stone you see in this next slide They've got sword, pointed object, uh, dagger, and the X is in the next, in this slide, multiple X are present. They, when they are driven across the skin, they are called as the sharp because they've got sharp cutting instrument. And when they are applied on the body, always they produce the incised wound. But when the pointed object like arrow or ice pick, like when driven across the skin, they can lead the stabbing. I stabbing may be puncturing, may be penetrating, may be perforating, depending upon the depth of the penetration. Number third is the first force trauma, which we can firearm weapons. You see the categories of all firearm injuries, rifled weapon and the uh, shotguns. We will classify the firearm injuries and the weapons in the separate chapters of the firearm injuries. So these are the the mechanical weapons which produce all these injuries. Firearm can be classified the shotguns, maybe a rifled weapon. So these are the collection corps, pistols, revolvers, automatic guns, and otherwise. These are the, the classification of the firearm weapons. You see the thermal injuries. I talked just about thermal injuries. Uh, thermal injuries may be either exposed against the hot substances when flame is to be driven across or come a, a contact with the skin. This lead the flame burn and may be involved either dermis, maybe epidermis. This is the dry burn category. But if you see in the next slide, this is the good example of the scale. Now you see the big uh, boil is present over the thumb of the foot area. The boiling water falls on the this area can lead a uh, boil formation. And if you puncture this boil, exuded material can be. This can happen every. Uh, even in every home, when boiling water falls down on any part of the body, it can lead to scaled formation, and scaled will be boiling in the forum. This is the weight burn. And when flame is given across the skin in the first slide, leading to dry burn, and this is a good example of the weight burn. But similarly, ther thermal injuries also when uh, a cold, like is the when you see sometimes people are walking over the ice ice area or mountain or the the, the army people. Who are walking on the mountain contain uh, the uh, the the snowfall. Now persistently walking on the snowfall. Now the most probably they have got frost by bite or French foot because the necrosis of the tissue due to excessive exposure to the cold can lead the frost bite or French foot. This is the excessive exposure to cold. These are the excessive exposure to the hot area. Then we've got chemical injuries and chemical including strong acids and strong alkalis. Most probably you see that throwing of acid and alkalis for disfiguration of face on the basis of enmity basis. Most probably 
the male can throw the acid or alkali on the face of a female to take revenge and they lead a severe disfiguration the chemical used for the acid and alkali even can thrown on the body leading the chemical burn or chemical injuries by either the corrosive acids or by alkali throwing chemical injuries next you see electrical injuries electrical when excess when the excess portion can come across the contact with the in sparking burn uh, that is current now dc current or ac current leading to severe necrosis of the you see easily in the foot there is a severe necrosis along with a degenerative area in the in the fingers and the palm of the foot now leading to necrosis due to the sparking of the electricity leading such eye of the the burn such injuries can be identified by histological examination of the portion of the this area see the metallization in the deeper tissue we can easily say that they are the electrical injuries then you see the uh, third type of classification of injuries uh, it is of two type third we called is the legal previously i talk about the anatomical then i talk about medico legal and third classification is, is the legal classification legal classification merges in the two categories it was previous previously the injuries was classified into simple and grievous they say the either the injuries are very simple either the injuries are very dangerous when the injuries are very dangerous they said to be grievous injuries which are deleted nowadays because we are practicing according to kisasi diet ordinance but by i just talk about the previous legal classification of injuries are based on the simple injuries and grievous injuries grievous injuries are called as the dangerous injuries now then also we have got homicide and everybody is know about the word homicide homo means man and cider means to kill killing of one person by another person we called as the homicide homicide Maybe of a, hello, homicide. Maybe of either culpable homicide. Try to understand me, please. Keep quiet. Culpable homicide and number two is the non-culpable homicide. Culpable homicide is also called the deserving blames, where punishment is awarded to the person who are involved in killing. And non-deserving blames is a non-culpable homicide, though there is a killing of a person, but the blame is not deserved. no punishment let us see the description of culpable homicide and non culpable homicide culpable homicide may be of two type one is the murder and another is the manslaughter here the punishment is awarded culpable homicide deserving blames so culpable homicide may be murder may be manslaughter these are two important uh, uh, terminologies let us see very carefully the definition of the uh, murder murder is a defined as a killing of one person by another person with malice of four thoughts malice of four thoughts is with bad intention when a person kill someone with bad intention whether implied or expressed means when a person kill someone with bad intention by any mean we call it as the murder but basically for murder uh, there are three factors contributed or three factor must be necessary for the murder a person who are killing someone there are three factors one is the pre planning the people are making pre planning for killing someone then they are making preparation number two is the preparation and number third is the action so there are three factor must contribute that pre planning preparation and action pre planning means suppose a person want to kill someone to do murder he pre plan in his upper story that in which way i would like to kill someone so this is the pre planning and he can select the area where a which area is suitable for killing someone so preparation pre planning and preparation he was a, a second stage of preparation he he prepare himself mentally for killing someone he can choosing the weapon he can selecting the time he can uh, selecting the position and otherwise and number third one when he he do some action he draws a pistol from his pocket and he fired this is the physical action of the body so murder for murder 
there are three factors must be contributed. One is the pre-planning, preparation, and action. This is a killing of one person by another person with the malice of our thoughts, whether expressed or implied. Expressed and implied means when you justify from his, his mere action of the body, we call this the, 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 the expressed or implied actions of the body. Number two is the manslaughter. You listen to this word many times in the newspapers and the media, the word manslaughter, manslaughter, or manslaughter. So what is the difference between murder and manslaughter? Because murder deserving blame, punishment can be awarded for murder. Again, punishment can be awarded for manslaughter. Manslaughter is a killing of the type of homicide. It is a killing of one person by another person uh, without malice of our thoughts. There he has got no intention to, to kill someone, but person can be dies away. For basically, this manslaughter may be of two types. One is the voluntarily manslaughter and another the involuntary manslaughter. Let us see here the voluntarily manslaughter. Now, voluntary manslaughter is that his intention, so for example, is that person who is attempting for rape. He intentionally, his intention is only to cause the rape, to attempt a rape. He intentionally attacked the female for conducting the sexual assault only. He has got no malice of forethought for killing of the female. But the mishap took place that during attempt of his sexual assault, there is a quarrel between the female and male occurs and female dies away. So this is the voluntary manslaughter. He voluntarily attacked on the female for doing the rape, but suddenly and unintentionally female dies during this act. This is called as the voluntarily manslaughter. Though this is a deserving blame, but there is a no malice of thought because person has only and only intention to cause sexual assault. He has no intention to cause the death of the female. Number second is the involuntarily manslaughter. Again, here there is a, no any intention to kill someone, but uh, due to some circumstantial accidental event, person can die. Example is that suppose you are coming from home, you are driving some car, you want to go your office or your university, your intention is to go only and you are running the vehicle on the road, you are not intended to hit anybody, but suddenly a person is crossing the road and you have hit the body, and a person dies away due to accident. You are not, previously you are not intention to kill someone, but an accidentally event can took place and you kill someone on accident. This is the involuntary manslaughter. Similarly, for example, if a severe patient, serious patient come in the hospital, doctor can manage the case on his behalf and try his base level to maintain the patient anyhow, Intentionally, he wants to save the life of a person, but unintentionally, because of some ways, the person can die away. His, his intention was not to kill the person, but the, some, but the person can die away because of a lack of uh, anesthesia, uh, uh, oxygen inhalation, or other area. This is, again, a good example of the involuntary manslaughter. Then, then second category is the non-culpable homicide, now not deserving blames. Non-culpable homicide can be subclassified into three types. One is justifiable, second is the self-defense, and number third is the excusable homicide. Justifiable homicide, again you see here, uh, though this is a homicide, this is a killing of one person by another person, but not deserving blame, not punishable. Let us see how. Now, justifiable homicide, good example is judicial hanging. When a court award any sentence of the hanging till death, this is the judicial hanging. Though this is a homicide, but not deserving blame, not punishable, because the sentence is passed by court to, to hang of some person till death. This is called, person is justified. This is justifiable homicide. So this is a good example of justifiable homicide. This is a killing of one person by another person, but is justified on the ground because it is a justifiable homicide ordered by the law enforcing agency. Number two, when people are performing Umrah or Hajj, you see a lot of the people are compressed interiorly as well as the posteriorly. Just now people are dies away. Nobody will be punished of this because this is the, this is the just a, a uh, 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 people will be compressed due to crowding and person can be dies with. This is justifiable 
person cannot be no person is responsible for conducting a crime or no person is responsible for punishing this is against justifiable homicide homicide because on the basis of the circumstantial evidences that the person dies away due to overcrowding due to compressing while performing umrah or hajj or sometime people run away they are passing over the body falls down and run over the body kill someone it is again not will be punishable this is called as the justifiable homicide third example for justifiable homicide is the who you see sometime you some sometime the the uh, prisoners are escaping from the jail now the people who are arrested in the jails sometime people are try to escaping from the prison and the, the line is forcing agency constables are sitting in the morchas they start making firing and the, the person who tried to escape from the poor prison he be, is killed by the the law enforcement agencies he, during uh, running from the prison this is again justifiable because the person was uh, running from the jail so they can kill the person again this is justifiable non culpable homicide this is not uh, can be punished in the court of the law second category is the uh, self defense non culpable homicide in the in the form of self defense you see sometime when you are sitting in your home at night time sometime a theft enter in the home sometime the theft enter in the bank for the robbery purposes or when the third person like theft enter in the home at night time now in this defense of yourself self defense in the defense of your your uh, family members are defense of some society now you don't uh, kill the person directly but you first of all warn him now you warn him that it is better to leave the home otherwise you start firing now now suppose the person or theft is not obeying your order and he can uh, do some un events to make a robbery or make a harassment in the home want to kill someone or taking the robbery then you can start firing and first of all the pattern is that you don't apply the shot directly on the vital area but as you first of all breaking the legs now you warn him that if you are not to become uh, obey the order then i will kill you but first of all you breaking the legs you breaking the arms and if again he cannot order so for self defense and defense of your family member defense in the society you can kill again this is a justifiable this cannot be punished in the the court of law this is a one of more important exhibit because another person third person can enter in your home at night time this is the identification is that this is a theft he comes with some bad intention to take some valuable from this so if you do like this one by warning first of all then this again will be non justifiable after clarification of the circumstantial evidence third category of the uh, non culpable homicide is excusable this is the third category of uh, excusable homicide again this is a excused homicide will be excluded on the basis of some circumstantial ev ev evidences like as uh, uh, you see here that sometime you see the wrestling game when the person is starting pinching someone on the face area you see most sometime in the boxer they apply the forceful fist on the uh, the uh, the temporal area or forceful bending of the neck sometime person has got the postural asphyxia and he can dies away due to star pinching diffuse axonal injury on the temporal area suddenly lead to the death of the boxer in the, in the crease this is again excusable why because the, whenever any misadventure go beyond uh, the control of accused accused was not in position to kill someone but he was in game during wrestling game during uh, some other intention he only to play the game to apply the fist he doesn't know that he will apply a post forceful fist on the temporal area so there will be diffuse axonal injury and personally personally person can dies away or by breaking break by forceful bending the neck area during wrestling game he has got postural asphyxia and he can die so again this is justifiable on the basis of the circumstances this is, this is again good category of non culpable homicide now this was previous uh, classification of uh, injuries now at 
present in our Pakistan, we are a legal classification of injury practicing under the headings of the Kisas and Diyatani. This is a one important implication of the new system of Kisas and Diyat ordinances it started in 1991 by, by, by President Ziaul uh, and other, uh, I'm sorry, that is Parvez uh, Mushraf and other to implicate a new system and they have to delete it down previous uh, simple injuries, grievous injuries on this one. They now, there's in presently, we are practicing the system in Pakistan is the Kisas and Tiyatari. I just only give the definition what I talk about the Kisas and what I am saying the Diyat. Now this is uh, totally based upon the according to the uh, Islamic uh, point of the view because on the basis of the Quran and Sunnah as the system is prevailing in the other Muslim countries especially in the Saudi Arabia and other Muslim countries they're prevailing the the Islamic laws on the basis of Kisas. Kisas is the compensation. Kisas is only the compensation to be paid uh, Kisas is only by causing this similar hurt on the same part of the convict. Kisas word is by causing similar hurt on same part of the convict and Diyat is a compensation to be paid to the offender or hearers of the offender. Now they say, you see Islam say the hath ke badle hath, kaan ke badle kaan, aank ke badle aad, aank. So this is the Kisas. You can do the same injury on same part of the convict. Either you, you can do like this one, or if you does not uh, uh, compensate the kissas because nobody will uh, try to apply, allow anybody to kill me, to take an eye, or to apply any injury on my same part, but they can compensate in the form of the second relaxation is the diyat. Diyat is the compensation in terms of the money which should be given instead of the injury sustained by the victim. If victim is uh, alive, then compensation is paid to the victim. But if the victim dies away, then compensation will be given to the hearers or the relatives of the close relatives of the victim. So this is basically nowadays in Pakistan, we are prevailing the injury type of injuries and the classification of injury on the basis of Kisas and Diyat 1991. Now, this system was prevailed by Molvis, Alamas, and Muftis and in Islam, in a Sharia courts in Islamabad without consultation of the forensic expert because a lot of the flaws and the pitfalls may be seen in this system. But though we are not talking about the pitfalls, what are the drawbacks in this system, but let us see here what are the concepts and how they can interpret the injuries on human body. You see in this picture, uh, in the this skeletal area, you see this, this uh, Picture show two portions. One is the head is to be separated down and lines are cross across the head. Now head is uh, separate and from the uh, neck up to the lower limbs is the second portion. They say that this system say that all those injuries, if anybody sustained on the head area, they fit these injuries in the word shuja. Now shuja is an Arabic word and they say the person who are sustaining injuries on head and face area, including chin area, they are all placed in the class in the class of the shuja. And shuja may be this is a separate chapter. We will discuss this Kisas and Dhidarian separately, individually to make you very clarification. But at this level, you only say the presently they classify injury in this way that all those injuries which are affecting on head and face. Now they are merging in the class shuja. And they can shuja uh, maybe injury affecting on the head and face. And number two is from chin up to lower limb. They, they say the, all those injuries which are sustained on the rest of the body, in, except the head and face, they put inside the word jur. Jur is a injuries which are sustaining on the rest of the body other than the head and face. So this is a very simple classification. Injuries affecting on the head and face, they are placed in the shuja. Injuries affecting on the rest of the body, either locomotive system, arms, legs, abdominal area, chest area, they put in the jur, jur, jur classification. Jur may be of again two types. Jur may be of jur jaifa. They say 
simplify this is again a arabic word they say all those injuries which are driven across the cavities you see here human body has got the cranial cavity cranial cavity come in the shuja but you see the lower portion that is the chest area this is chest cavity second is the abdominal cavity and number third is the pelvic cavity so the jur is again two type one is jur jaifa now again a word a arabic word they say all those injury which penetrated the cavities when the if you take a knife and you stab in the abdomen if when penetrated in the abdomen this is called jur jaifa if you if you take a knife and if Uh, penetrated in chest cavity or pelvic cavity this is called jur, jur jaifa now you see the picture in the very clarification of jur jaifa in next slide now you see the picture now you see this picture the knife is in the abdomen now this is the knife in the abdomen this is jur jaifa because this injury is penetrating beyond the cavity abdominal cavity this is a good example of jur jaifa and next slide you see the knife is in the chest cavity and also whenever the cavities is involved we called as the jur jaifa when they goes either in chest cavity when injuries go penetrated in the abdominal cavity when injury penetrated in the pelvic cavity they all are merges under the heading of the jur jaifa but if i say jur number 2 is the jur ghair jaifa they say all those injury which are affect on the rest of the body you see rest of the body is either arm either leg either thighs either foot so you see in this slide when the injuries you see incised wound on the thigh this injuries me go jur ghair jaifa you foot you see next slide injuries on the foot this is again jur ghair jaifa so when cavities are involved they are called jur jaifa but when the cavities are not involved rest of other body like hands thighs foot they are comes under the heading of the jur ghair jaifa next we see here number fourth is the itlaf e udu other than the shuja shuja uh when did you ha bas khatam hai now you see the itlaf e udu you itlaf e udu is the number uh, third category of the injuries according to sajid tadin who ever des uh, amputated uh, who are who 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 ever causing an amputation amputated uh, dismember or sever any organ or limb suppose a person can cut the thumb you see in this picture a thumb is cut across this is the itlaf e udd these are in other sections now this is again a separate section other than the shuja and uh, jur jaifa and ghair jaifa when there is a, any whoever causing a dest in uh, this member amputated a sever any organ or limb we called itlaf e udd and number four, th- fourth is the next one itlaf e salahat e udd itlaf e salahat when salahat of the in organ is to be lost down now in the in previous itlaf e udd salahat is still maintained down these are all arabic terminology itlaf e salahat is or whoever destroy permanently impair the function power of any organ or cause permanent disfiguration of the face if you see in this in this slide this is the drooping of the lip so an application of force causing the paralysis of the nerves la cause permanent paralysis of the part we call as itlaf e salahat e udd but in next next slide you see when a person throwing any acid or alkalis on the face in a female for jealousy purpose we called is itlaf e salahat e udd because this is a permanent disfiguration of the face in a category percentage cannot be given across in the kisas the third answer if full face is to be burned down again it is a case of itlaf e salahat e udd if 1% is burned down again it is so this is a good pit for a pitfall or uh, drawbacks in this system that a person female has got only 10% burning of the face again fit the same case and punishment will be same if full face is to be burned down again case fit in the itlaf e salahat e udd punishment will be same so this is a very good excellent drawback in the itlaf e udd and itlaf e salahat e udd next classification class this is fourth classification this is a, a accidental classification Uh, on the uh, manner of inflection number uh, manner of inflection so there is accidental injuries you see accidental injuries are self explained accidental and number second is the non accidental non accidental injuries are suicidal self inflicted or suicidal injuries you see the front of the forearm show multiple similar tentative cuts seen on the forearm 
now in below the wrist area these are these are self inflicted a person can inflict multiple injuries usually these are the suicidal attempt who can uh, uh, do the injuries and next to the class who who can uh, um, uh, make multiple uh, uh, small attempted cut these are hesitate to smaller cut on the more exposed area on the uh, forearm so we call it as this suicidal or self inflicted injuries and this is a non accidental you see homocidal you see in first slide the multiple stabbing against the homicide in second slide the fingers show multiple cut now these are the defense wounds defense wounds suppose a person can hit as some uh, lati or a sharp cutting instrument he can raising his hand in defense so these are defense wounds he can sustain the injuries on the fingers and and, and third side third slide the palm shows the incised wound again these are the defense so this is the homocidal categories of the injuries now next the fabricated now some females are some people can do a false injuries fabricated injuries on the neck area so there are very similar multiple tentative cuts on the neck area female has to inflicted injuries on neck area these are called as the fictitious feign or fabricated injuries to making some demand also this is the uh, second last uh, class we have injuries maybe on uh, on the manner of inflection anti mortem injuries all those injuries which are occurs uh, during life when during living status when you apply the injuries on the body we call this the anti mortem injuries but sometime person can die away they can inflict multiple injuries after death we call this the post mortem injuries anti mortem injuries and post mortem injuries on the body should be differentiated on the basis of the histological examination of the tissue to see the any vital reaction in the tissues and then the last classification of injuries according to causative agent either number one is the sharp force trauma may be cutting by a sharp force trauma by a knife second is the blunt force trauma produced by blunt uh, force trauma you see the by lati stone or otherwise this is the sharp force trauma this is the you know, okay, blunt force trauma by hitting some uh, hard blood some like lati because lati can apply this irregular wound seen on the temporal area and number third is the fast force trauma fast force trauma fire of injuries are said to be a fast force trauma because person can easily die away next go uh, next this is the then dicing injuries when a person can be hit by some cubical structures uh, they are uh, x type of injuries or v shaped injuries sustained some portion of the body sustained again cubical structure and uh, the we call this uh, dicing injuries and bite mark when the uh, injuries produced by biting we call this bite mark injuries pattern injuries you see the tire of the vehicle run over the body and to give the pattern of the same pattern of the tire mark over the body we call it is the pattern injuries because they left a, a same print over the skin we call it is the pattern injuries with tire mark over the body when body tire pass over the body resulting to the same impression this is the just stumping of the same object on the skin so this the tire mark will be seen we call it is the pattern injuries and radiation injuries are all those when exposed to the x ray machine or electrical so we call it is the radiation injuries i am stopping over here classification is over i i, I am talking uh, the mechanism of production of wound in my next class any this is the mechanism of production of wound i will discuss in my next class if any question you can please ask a question any question sir what about yes please pardon yes please now pehle kya puchna chahte hain puchiye beta hello awaaz nahi aa rahi hai please ask a question hello any any question any difficulty उटर कॉन्सेंट 
now assault is the application of physical force in a hostile manner hostile manner means it is in a hidden manner but without his or her consent and battery is actual application of physical force without his or her it is not in hidden way another question please sir manslaughter ko repeat kar dein manslaughter is a type of non culpable homicide now it is a killing of one person by another person but the difference between murder and manslaughter is that in manslaughter there are one factor is contributed in if you remember in murder there are three factors preparation pre planning and action but in manslaughter only one factor contributed that is the action because who you are coming from your home and you are driving the car and you hit someone you do, you are there was a, your intention was not to kill someone on the road accidentally you can do accident this is the involuntarily manslaughter but voluntary manslaughter is that your intention is only to do sexual assault with the female but not intention to kill female but when you attempt for doing some sexual assault on the female this couple took place and female can be dies and eventually unfortunately and intention is not to kill the female this is called as the voluntary manslaughter because you voluntarily attack the female for only purpose intention is to cause sexual assault to do the rape but your intention was not to kill female but during dispute female dies away this is called as the voluntary manslaughter because you voluntarily attack and involuntary manslaughter is that you are coming you don't know about whether you you are doing murder by driving a car vehicle or others you are on the road and suddenly person can be killed during by hit by vehicle this is called as the involuntary manslaughter another question please hello that's it okay thank you very much 